Hi everyone, this is Scott Nybachen for Dynamite Entertainment, and I'm here with multi-talented comics creator Declan Shalvey, the author of Dynamite's upcoming new Thundercat series. Declan, thanks for joining us on the channel. Uh, thanks for having me, Scott. <laughs> uh, first off, I wanted to ask you about how you came to work on this new series. Did you watch the original 1980s Thundercats cartoon when you were growing up? And if so, how did that influence your decision to take on the assignment? Um, yes, I, I did. I was uh, I was an avid watcher of the uh, cartoon as a kid. Um, it was um, <clears throat> growing up in the west of Ireland, that opening sequence uh, just blew my little brain uh, <laughs> and sucked it in. Um, uh, and that was that was basically the reason I said yes <laughs> before any consideration of do I have the time? You know, can I work into my schedule? I think I just said yes and just said whatever. You know, I'll, I'll work it out. But it was uh, it was Nate Cosby who, um, uh, the editor of the book, who who uh, emailed me, asked me would I be interested? And um, I, uh, I, you know, from a writing point of view, I really like taking a book and like building it and how it's going to look and the approach and everything. So like to take something like a known quantity like Thundercats, which hasn't really been in comics for a long time. The opportunity yeah. to kind of do something new and interesting was like, I, I couldn't really pass it up. Yeah. And like related to that, like in the decade since the show ended, like the fans have gotten some additional Thundercats material and some like video games, some other comic series. But like you said, there haven't been any in a, in a while. And not a lot of those go back to the show's, to the show's beginnings. Um, how does your new title fit into the canon of the original animated series? And, and can you give us a quick synopsis of the first story arc? Sure. Well, well, it doesn't. It doesn't fit into canon. Like it's 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 an it's a re it is a reboot, um, mm. basically. Uh, so it's it's not, it's not a retelling of the cartoon, yeah. But at the same time, I'm using the cartoon as a starting point. So the series will start just after uh, the the Thundercats, um, land on or crash land on Third Earth. So you know they don't have. They're all, they don't have all their tools and weapons ready yet. They're just kind of basically trying to you know, make a start in this in this new place. But of, of course, various um, nefarious characters have come out of the wood, woodwork. So they're basically they're trying to like stake a claim while defending what they have. Um, and this first story arc basically, well, overall the book really deals with um, Lino and his you know his quest to become a leader, but also like dealing with the fact that like five minutes ago, he was a kid uh, with no responsibilities. And now all of a sudden he's all this stuff thrust upon him and all the relationships that he's considered safe have changed. You know, um, uh, Tigra was kind of a mentor to him and now he's in charge. So, you know, there's like, there's some kind of character conflicts there, but then also they're going to have to fight somebody now and then uh, because it's the Thundercats. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of where I'm going with it from kind of um, <clears throat> taking it from the very beginning and just um, because I rewatched I rewatched the original cartoon and I found that like, you know, everything gets set up pretty fast. And I thought there was room in the middle there to kind of like, you know, it's like uh, like in Lost, you know, uh, the TV show where they're all trying to start up. That's that's kind of where I saw it. It's like Thundercats with a little bit of Lost in there. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the titles that you've worked on as an artist um, have been on, sort of on the darker end of the comic spectrum. I'm thinking about things like 28 Days Later and Dark Avengers and Northlanders. And as your and your writing has also been on, a little on the grittier side, like with your crime stories like Savage Town and uh, Bog Bodies. How much of that uh, more mature perspective are you bringing to Thundercats and how is it manifesting itself? Um, <clears throat> yeah, there's a little bit of it there. I mean, you know, I'm... Um... As you can tell, I'm a very dark and depressing um, individual. But, uh, no, I do. Sweater, I do yeah, like the sweater. Really gives that away. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I would say you no. Know, I definitely kind of leaner to darker sensibilities. Like I like kind of street characters and dark stories. But um, you know, I would say that there's a little. I'm def definitely there's. I'm sprinkling a little bit of darkness in this. But I mean, Thundercats got fairly kind of like. Part of me was thinking, oh man, I'm gonna to have to kind of like uh, reapproach how we look at the Thundercats, and then you see Mumra, who is like the darkest, like the you know the Black Pyramid, yeah. and it's some really, really, um, you know, He's frightening, uh, and I, very I frightening some of that as well. And I was like, wow, yeah, yeah. So it's not, <clears throat> it's funny when you look back at the show, and it's not just like fun action. It's like, you know, there is a lot of weird sci-fi and mad characters, and you know, like amazing landscapes and environments and dark, dark stuff. So, um, um. I don't think I'm doing anything with the with the comic that wasn't in the cartoon, but um, I th I think I'm, I would say I'm having a slightly more 
grounded sensibility more so because i said the character stuff you know and they're still you know cat creatures on an alien planet so um but they're not um they're not all there's definitely some feelings involved but at the same time there's a lot of punching too so i would say i'm sprinkling a little bit of like um some kind of a darker approach but not not grim and gritty you know Mm -hmm. and and like you started out in comics primarily as an artist but as you've moved over to the writing side uh have you found that all those years of drawing are proving useful in the process of scripting comics as well and if so how has that affected the like the your collaboration with uh, drew moss uh, the artist on thundercats well i found that i'm by drawing comics, I've gotten to write them, and now I can draw the covers to the comics I write. So <laughs> I'm getting to do Thundercats covers uh, because I'm writing it. So that's nice. Uh, or, uh, you know, you could argue that. But, um, um, well, yeah, I, I always I always wanted to draw comics. I guess I always wanted like to tell stories, and drawing comics was how I did that. And it wasn't until I was older and I had more experience and I had an established career in comics where I was able to kind of take those steps to kind of broaden my broaden the ways in which I can tell stories, be it through color or through art or through uh, um, uh, writing. And it's been a really great experience um, so far. Um, uh, um, and I would say that like, um, sorry, I think I lost track of your question there. Oh, just like, like how, like, how is that informed? Like, uh, like the work? With oh yeah. The- sorry. I, I mean, I would say from, from drawing, scripts with lots of brilliant writers like i've learned i learned a lot as i was going i don't think you know when you're starting out the advice is to read scripts well i've read a lot of scripts in my time now you know <laughs> yeah. and by some incredible writers so i definitely you know learned along the way um and i would say it was the good not necessarily write scripts but like working relationships i've had with with some people that have really um and from dry comics too you know i'm aware of the pitfalls of it um what's difficult uh, what's stressful and I think I have a good understanding working with artists what's going to be a problem how I can kind of avoid some of those problems um, and um, just from the conversations with Drew like I think we weirdly just really struck a kind of a good connection from the very start and um, uh, like I just loved everything he's everything he's done I've seen is fantastic and he seems to really like the back and forth so um, I'm it, it's just great like you'd I, I'd I knew Drew's work, but I didn't know him personally. Mm. Uh, so it was Nate Cosby who who brought him onto the project. But uh, it was it was the best casting decision because now I I know the book's going to look good, and I, I I enjoy Drew's work, so I can write for him. And if I'm writing for him and he's excited, then the pages are just going to be, you know, even better. It, rather yeah. than me just writing a script, handing it over to whoever, um, I much prefer the experiences where, not like I need to be directing or anything like that, or just in that the two of us are on the same wavelength and that way I know so much of what I'm trying to channel into the book will get into it through him, which will make it even better. Yeah. Uh, and like Thundercat's large cast of uh, well-rounded characters has always been one of its biggest selling points. Uh, so which of the Thundarians or the, or the mutants uh, turned out to be your favorites to write? Um, <clears throat> I would say, hmm, I think it's Panthro. I mean, I love Lino. Lino's Lino's the main character in this, you know, but I, I just like Panthro. I guess I like writing the kind of more grumpy characters, and Panthro is definitely the grump in the in this book. Um and hmm, I think it's safe to say Slythe appears in the arc, and I'm I'm liking him. I'm um I think what I didn't like about the cartoon is I didn't really know too much about him, and I think I'd like to dip into more of his motivations and um, you know, uh uh not like that he's the hero or anything but you know i think it's you know it's it's always more interesting when the villains you kind of know where they're coming from even if you disagree with them um so i'm kind of looking forward to dipping in there um although i haven't quite gotten to mumra's section quite yet but i'm very much <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm getting a bit uh, antsy waiting for that moment because mumra was like you know my guy I, I don't think it's a spoiler to say like i'm gonna my cover of tissue four will be of mumra and I am like psyching myself up for that one. <laughs> and that, that that kind of answers my next question, which was which uh since you're drawing covers for the series as well, which one uh, are you most looking forward to drawing? But uh, it sounds well, like Mara is up there. Yeah, well the first the first one you've seen, it's the sort of omens moment, which um I have to say, where is it? Oh hang on a second. Oh. That's it. I, I didn't have this oh, one. There the we go. <laughs> but uh this 
this would have been great great reference at the time but um i got somebody gave me this at a convention last weekend so i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna be using that as a as a as a writing tool but um uh, the second one I'm really happy with. The third one I'm working on now, and that's uh, I'm I'm dr- I'm going to draw the thunder tank in that one. Just cool. Uh, it's I mean it's writing it is great because you're channeling so much from your childhood, but but drawing it reminds me more of being a kid mm-hmm. because you know I was drawing that stuff as a kid. I wasn't writing stories, so it's really cool to kind of like work on something intellectually as a grown up, but also fundamentally channeling your inner kid it's uh it's 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 really cool yeah which and finally like based on your extensive research into the world of thundercats which one of the original toys uh would you most like to have now i'd like to have lino mm. because my sister threw my lino down the stairs and broke his head oh. <laughs> i'm still really really sore about it i bring it up at any 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 possible um uh, opinion although she reminded me recently that i that i burnt i left one of her like teddies by the fire and it burnt and that's why she did it but like <laughs> i didn't do that on char- on purpose that was an accident i just wanted on the record here <laughs> dynamite entertainment that i accidentally did that i, I know it didn't deserve that treatment <laughs> all right duly noted for the record uh all right uh Declan, thanks for giving us some sight beyond sights beyond sight for the uh future for this future hit <laughs> And uh, everyone, look for the first issue of Thundercats in comic shops in February. And don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching.